and says, just stop going out at night. That's what keeps happening in America. The citizens of the country pay taxes so the government can do the big things that we can't privately do ourselves. The most important thing we pay the government to do is to protect us. And the Florida school shooter was a deranged animal who we should have been protected from. The local police and school district knew he was violent and dangerous. State agencies knew he was mentally unstable and a threat. The FBI was tipped off twice about him being a school shooter and didn't follow up. We've now learned there was an armed deputy on campus during the shooting. And instead of entering the building and neutralizing the shooter like he was trained and paid to do, he sat and waited outside the building for four minutes. The shooting lasted for six minutes. Lives could have been saved. And the deputy wasn't even fired. The sheriff only suspended him. Then he just retired with full benefits. So government failed on the local, state, and federal level, and the Democrats blame the NRA. Now it's time for us to take the NRA out. What they Watch did us do, do it what do you under... mean take the NRA out? What it means mean? it's time for us to limit the control the NRA has over How the Congress because people are dying. Let me be clear. People died because of the evil shooter. But the government could and should have protected us from him. Now the Democrats want to take away the AR-15. Couldn't the next shooter just use a shotgun? I don't get these people. The government fails to defend us, so liberals don't want us to defend ourselves? This is a sad pattern. Some Americans aren't going to put up with it anymore. Here's Andrew Pollack at President Trump's school safety listening forum at the White House this week. My daughter has no voice. She was murdered last week when she was taken from us. Shot nine times on the third floor. Now, we, as a country, failed our children. We protect airports. We protect concerts, stadiums, embassies. The Department of Education that I walked in today that has a security guard in the elevator. How do you think that makes me feel? I'm pissed. Because my daughter I'm not going to see again. She's not here. She's not here. It stops. We all work together and come up with the right idea. And it's school safety. It's not about gun laws right now. That's, that's another fight, another battle. So the government gets hacked. Amtrak trains derail. Illegals pour across the border. The Obamacare website crashes. The VA lets vets die in secret waiting lines. The feds let guns go missing into Mexico. The feds miss Bernie Madoff. No WMDs in Iraq. State and local authorities botch Katrina. The list goes on and on. But every single time government messes up, here's the Democrats, the party of big government, diverting attention to Republicans, Fox News, racism, or not enough government funding. And once the left assigns blame, their solution is always the same. Bigger government, less freedom. A hurricane? Blame global warming and stop drilling for oil. ISIS attack? It's our fault they hate us. We have to stop saying radical Islam. Obamacare implodes? Let's spend $25 trillion on single-payer health care instead. And then the FBI screwed up in Lakeland, Charleston, Orlando, Fort Hood, and the Boston Marathon. And we're supposed to assume the Trump-Russia FBI investigation was done right? Democrats say we aren't even allowed to criticize the FBI, even when corruption and incompetence stares us in the face. So the bottom line is this. People are not safe in America because we're not getting the protection that we're paying for. Here to react, conservative columnist and best-selling author Ann Coulter. Good to see you, Ann. Good to see you. What did you think? <laughs> I thought it was an excellent introduction. It reminds me, um, I mean, I like how the left keeps going back and forth on whether they, they love our men in blue or, <laughs> or they're killers. Yeah, they hated them last year. <laughs> right, yeah. right. It switches depending on the issue. And, you know, I like cops, but the motto is when seconds count, we'll be there in minutes. <laughs> um, that's why some of us want to be armed and protect ourselves. And I think one of the creepiest things about these shootings um, is all this advice that the students are getting about running and hiding. No, I'm sorry. I'm an American. I'm not running and hiding. 
hiding. I would like to be armed and at least have a fighting chance. Um, we have especially seen now the police, who are the only ones um, liberals want to have guns. They'll protect us. They'll take care of us. Well, no, they really can't. And look at the policeman that was armed and trained failed to protect the yes. students he was And they're getting warning after warning. That's why some of us want to be armed ourselves. Um, I do think the idea, I don't know who's floating it now, but um, of having a, an, an armed guard at schools is completely moronic. Um, that's the first guy the psychotic takes out. <laughs> Just shoot me. Right. Um, no, that's the beauty part of, I mean, all these states, thanks to John Lott, now have concealed carry. Um, and the way it's being portrayed on the other networks um, is we want all teachers armed. No, I promise you we don't yeah, want that. It's like that. the third grade science <laughs> teachers packing a pistol right in her apron no, pocket. No, it's people, including students on college campuses. I mean, there were a lot of kids, remember after Virginia Tech, right? a lot of kids who came forward and said, I am trained. I have a concealed carry permit. I have to leave it off campus before I step on campus. But I, if I'd had my gun that day. No, it's just to allow people who have been trained, who have their concealed carry permit, that includes coaches, it includes administrators, teachers, um, in some cases like colleges, it, it will include some of the students. And then the psycho doesn't know who has the gun. Right, and the, and the father who we showed made a great point. We protect everything we love in this country with guns, banks, politicians, celebrities, yeah. stadiums. Why don't we protect our children? And I want to you know, address the fact that a lot of people, I don't know if they saw the Wednesday forum, the tone was perfect. Trump listened. It was a really respectful exchange of ideas. And then you contrast that with what happened over at CNN. And they stacked the audience. And Marco Rubio and Dana Lash, NRA spokesperson, to their credit, went to the belly of the beast and just were totally treated like villains. Let's show some of that. Can you tell me right now that you will not accept a single donation from the NRA in the future? I wish the NRA lady I, I could have talked to because I would ask her how she can look in the mirror considering the fact that she has children. Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. You can shout me down when I'm finished, but let me answer Emma's question. You just told this group of people that you are standing up for them. You're not standing up for them until you say, I want less weapons. Yeah, that was the sheriff whose own deputy failed to protect the students. I see such a contrast. The momentum was going in the right direction when the president was listening to the families. And then CNN comes out with this trash and sets the entire conversation back. Did you see that? Forum. Sadly, I was out, but hopefully you I can find it online. You weren't at the looks, airport that day? It looks fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Something I definitely want to see. Um, I mean, they were calling the NRA spokeswoman a murderer. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard... Um, it sounds to me as if they were not fairly giving both sides. I think they kind of had the panel stacked, but turn on CNN or MSNBC any hour, any day of the week. You're not going to see John Lott. You're not going to see me. You're not going to see any coherent conservative on any of the they programs. They don't present so of course. both sides in the gun <laughs> debate. It's only anti-gun. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh mentioned this on his radio show. Let's hear what he had to say. Last night, somebody in that CNN crowd went public very loudly with what the real ultimate objective is, and that's the confiscation of all weapons currently out there in the country. That's the objective. The audience booed Marco Rubio. The audience booed Dana Loesch. This is what indoctrination looks like. This is what a lifetime of propagandizing and indoctrination in the schools looks like. Do you agree with that? Um, well, I would like to say about the students, they are brilliant, passionate, articulate, make their own clothes, beautiful dancers. That's apparently all we can say about people who are making policy arguments. Um, as I wrote about in Godless, the first, the last time, I actually shut up liberals for at least a decade on this human shield, sending out victims to make their arguments for them. Um, look, fine, you can make your argument for gun confiscation or banning this or that gun, but... Could you not have someone weeping who just had a family member <laughs> die deliver that argument? Because you're just saying, oh, oh, yeah, our argument is so good, we're going to send out someone you can't argue back to. Uh, yeah. no, so let, let, you know, I don't know, Jake Tapper or whomever was hosting it. Um, again, I didn't see it. Let him make the argument. Let, let Rachel Maddow make the argument. But 
you can't be sending out people we're not allowed to respond to, i.e. weeping children. Um, the idea of confiscating guns, I mean, what, what liberals seem to believe is that they can, they can create a world without guns. But I must tell you, um, in a world without guns, I'm what's known as prey. Um, a world without guns is very frightening to, you know, a, a small female. The only way, I, I mean, as the saying goes, God made man and woman and Colonel Colt made them equal. It's the only <laughs> way I have a fighting chance. Well, don't tell everybody that you're packing. We don't want everybody, we want people to be, you want you to be unpredictable. I want them to be surprised. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's going to be a big surprise. <laughs> That's right, right in the chest. <laughs> Um, speaking of surprises, we had a little surprise coming out of this CNN thing. One of these students claims that CNN, when they recruited him to be a member of the forum, tried to doctor his questions, tried to change his script. Here was his allegation. It's Colton Hobb. They had taken what I had wrote and what I had briefed on and talked about, and they actually wrote the question for me. But, but not with your words. I mean, they put their own words into your question, even after, after they'd asked you to send questions Absolutely. in. But that seems dishonest. On, it, it definitely did, and that's kind of why I didn't go last night. Originally, I had thought that it was going to be um, more of my own question and my own say, and then it turned out to be more of just a script. And she had actually said that over the phone that I needed to stick to the script. All right, well, I have to read this. CNN is denying this. They're saying there's absolutely no truth to this. CNN did not provide or script questions for anyone in last night's town hall, nor have we ever. Kind of hard to believe when they were caught feeding Hillary questions <laughs> for the debate <laughs> through Donna Brazil. I mean, CNN's having a bad week, man. <laughs> Yes, they are. And but like I say, turn it on any hour of any day. You can see only certain points of view are are allowed. And I, I mean, I do think that's a mistake. I think it's gotten so much worse under Trump. It's fun to argue about politics. You refine your own position. But you can't see that on the other networks. And they and they go off and, and get crazier and crazier ideas when if you just had one person to give the other side there it would be so much more interesting and maybe you'd have a response maybe there would be a response it's not fair we'll never know it's not fair and balanced do you even know what the democrats want to do on guns all i know is that we have to do something i'm not sure what well, that something is i would also do you believe it's like, confiscation I, I i would i would like to do something too and that is an immigration moratorium and mass deportations as i wrote about this week 47 percent of all mass shootings since 2000 have been committed by first or second generation immigrants i mean if you take out the ones some of the frightening ones and spectacular ones committed by immigrants and the children of immigrants, San Bernardino, the Pulse nightclub, um, Fort Hood, uh, Virginia Tech. You take out some of the really big ones, what you're left with are these are these sad boy, young men with with what is pretty clearly paranoid schizophrenia, and then we can deal with it as a mental health problem. But you want to cut mass shootings in half like that, and you got to put an end to Teddy Kennedy's 1965 Immigration Act, just so, you know, Teddy could have a legacy. We have to live with twice as many mass shootings as we would. Oh, and by the way, most people don't know this, also in my column. We have fewer mass shootings than um, many developed con countries, um, Finland, yeah, France, that's England. Per, yeah, per capita, you're right. And that's a total lie that is perpetrated on the American people. And most important stat on this whole issue, I should have said it 17 times already, 90 Eight percent of our mass shootings take place in gun-free zones. There you go. Good to see you. There you go. <laughs> We're in the middle we of a flu epidemic. Yeah. No handshaking. <laughs> um, this to me. So let me see. Jihad is legitimate. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a guy that can't even say the Ura Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a terror group. Right. Nor Hezbollah. I mean, you, I just read it. So what's your reaction? Right. Well, th this is an old liberal trick. Um, it, they. they it's like the scorched earth policy to argumentation. They retreat an argument, burning the English language as they go. So we can't call them jihadists. We can't call it a war on terrorism. We can't call it. Just tell us what to call it and we'll have the debate. Um, but of course, as I'm sure you, you guessed, um, my principal objection to this list of nominees is that they are all white men, Sean. <laughs> and the lack of diversity just shocks me. Yeah, what happened to the lack of diversity? What happened here? 
<laughs> this is an outrage. As a matter of fact, maybe he needs a book of binders. Just you can borrow Mitt Romney's. You can borrow Mitt Romney's book of binders. Well, you know, as you know, I just got back from uh, from England, uh, which they have not bought into this whole diversity enthusiasm, um, which raises the important point that um, on the gun crimes, we keep hearing how low they are in, in Europe and, oh, they're so low when they have no guns. If you compare white populations, we have the same murder rate as Belgium. So perhaps um, it's not a gun problem. It is a demographic problem, which liberals are the ones are pushing, pushing, pushing. Let's get more Colin Ferguson's and more whoever the guy was who shot up Fort Hood. Why are they coming in to begin with? Hassan is, is Fort Hood. Hassan. All right. So you, you hear that they may come out. This was on drudges. I'm coming down here tonight. And I couldn't believe it. Just breaking a short time ago. 19 Obama executive orders. What happens if he tries to bypass Congress on the Second Amendment and bypass Congress on Article 1, Section 7 and use the 14th Amendment? What happens? On guns? On guns and on the debt ceiling. What? If he shreds the Constitution, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say it that way, if the imperial president shreds the Constitution? Um, I suspect if he tried to do it on guns, even he wouldn't, wouldn't do that. I mean, luckily, we've recently had the Supreme Biden Court said ruling. it may be as many as 19 executive orders Yeah, I think tomorrow. that for guns, they'd probably try to do it on, on ammunition. and um, Clips. I, I think we should, we should you know, respond with an ex-Republican president having executive orders. We won't ban abortion. We will just ban abortionists and abortion clinics. How would that be? Um, I mean, they, they're not serious about doing anything about shootings in America. Dianne Feinstein has a concealed carry permit for good reasons. Did you see what I, pl I played the clip yeah, of her? we did it on yeah. radio today, yeah. and, and I support her on that. She was in danger. So are other Americans, including women like herself. The fastest-growing group of gun owners are single women. Right. What, do, what, what, what are women supposed to do who are in danger? And this business that New York is pushing through about banning the, the um, extra capacity Magazine. Seven bullets. Okay, Seven. like all liberal solutions, this has nothing to do with the problem we're supposed to be addressing. If you are going into a gun free zone, as all of these mass shooters do, all but one since 1950 have, have shot up gun free zones, you have time to drop the magazine and insert another one. You have time and preparation to have more than one gun. It's only if you are the victim of a home invasion, as that woman in Georgia was last week, she and her children are, she sees a man outside the window, her husband's away, she runs to the top floor, she hides in a closet, the intruder opens the door, and God the bless way, her, she's shot. Space. She hid in the crawl space, and this guy she found She shot her. with six bullets in five. her gun. She, well, she thought shot all six. Only five hit the intruder, which is very good when you are a panicked woman protecting your children um, and probably not constantly down at the gun range. She hit f him in the face and neck five times, and yet he not only lived, he lived to flee in a car. What if there had been two intruders? What if she had not been as good a shot and only three of the bullets had, had, had hit her or uh, hit the intruder? It's when you have a home invasion that you need a large capacity magazine, especially if you are a female who isn't constantly at the gun range. Very well said. I think that is probably the strongest argument, Ms. Coulter, that I have heard about the clip argument and the bullet argument in New York. I don't know what you do in New York. Do you remember? Are we going to be? Is, are you going to arrest people that use eight bullets in in a home invasion? Well, they're not their arresting David Gregory. No, like yeah, like all arrested. other Obama rules, the all the gun rules do not apply to Diane Feinstein or. David David Gregory, I would also remind you that when Colin Ferguson shot up the LIIR, no one had a gun. He stopped and reloaded. It doesn't stop a multiple victim public shooter. You can bring lots of guns. And oh, by the way, they're lawbreakers. They might have a, an extra capacity magazine on them. It's the person who is defending her home who needs the, ex the extra capacity right. magazine. I got to run. Good to see you. Thank you.